I welcome you to the presence of the Most High God, the all-loving, the all-knowing, the all-seeing and all-knowing God, the one who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all we can think or imagine, the one who is able to take you from the ordinary to the extraordinary. He is the one who preserves your life and continually he is preserving your life. Welcome you to his presence in the name of Jesus Christ. Regardless of the conspiracies and the traps of the enemy, he delivered you. Because he has come to give you life and life in abundance. I pray that you will enjoy that life. I pray that you will enjoy that life and life in abundance in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This week, I declare that you will enjoy the life that God has given unto you. And you will enjoy it abundantly in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all we can think or imagine. According to the power that is working in us, the power that is deposited in us, the power of God that is in us, the Holy Spirit is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can think. Do you know that? Above all you can think or imagine, God is able to exceed them. Why not love, why not embrace that God that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you think or imagine. And I pray that this week the Lord exceed your expectations in life in the name of Jesus. I pray the Lord exceed the expectations of your family. I pray the Lord exceed the expectations of your business in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can think or imagine. No what I says, I have not seen, ear have not heard, it has not entered the heart of any man, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by the Spirit. There's a Lord the Spirit of God can reveal to you. Hold on, remain focused on Christ. And hold on to the Spirit of the Almighty. It is not by power, not by mind. It is by the Spirit of the Almighty God. Amen. And the Bible says in Romans 8, 11, If the Spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you, that same Spirit will quicken you. He will quicken you. That same Spirit will quicken you to life and give you life in abundance. That same Spirit will quicken you and make you more than conqueror. That Spirit will quicken you and make you more than enough in the name of the Lord Jesus. More than you can ever imagine. He will supply them for you. Do you know God will supply all our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus? All. Only God can supply all needs. Visible needs. Invisible needs. Even the needs that are unknown. Only God can supply them. He knows them. By the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Why not we rejoice and be glad in it? The God that can supply all our needs created this day for your joy, created this week for your joy, created this year for your joy. So we must rejoice and be glad in it. Let's confess that together. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. You confess it. This is the day that the Lord has made. You will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Let's pray. By confessing God's word, Psalm 103, beginning from verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all my iniquities. Who heal all our diseases. Who redeem our soul from destruction. Crown us with loving kindness and tender mercies. Fees our mouth with good things. Our youth is renewed like the eagle. He executes righteousness and justice. On behalf of all who are oppressed, as heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards us. As far as the east is from the west, so as he removed that transgression from us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He feeds our mouth with good things. That's what the word of God says. God is not a man that will lie. He's not a man that will repent. No, he will not lie. He will not repent. What he has said he will do, he will do. That is the God I present to you today. He feeds our mouth with good things. I pray that your warm mouth will be filled with good things. This week, your mouth will be filled with good things. In the name of Jesus, it shall be good news for you by day. It shall be good news for you by night. In the name of Jesus, he feeds our mouth with good things. May your mouth be filled with good things. May your mouth be filled with good things. Declare it. May your mouth, may my mouth be filled with good things good things this week may your mouth be filled with good things this week beyond this week it shall be good things in your mouth and I want to charge you may your mouth declare good things stop declaring negative things declare good things positive things about your life 
The positive things that heaven has prepared for you, the promises of God, declare them. Declare them because your mouth is filled with good things. Every word that proceeded out of your mouth shall be good news, shall be good things. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you will have no reason to declare bad things. In the name of Jesus, your ears shall be far from bad news. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Our topic today is good news, always good news in the name of Jesus. Our subtitle is Uncommon Favor, Uncommon Favor. Our text, Psalm 5 verse 12. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. You will surround him as with a shield. Luke 2 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. Luke 1, 28. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hello, thou art highly favored. Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Hallelujah. Uncommon favor is that one that is not common. Is that favor that is commanded. Uncommon favor is the favor that is commanded by heaven. Uncommon favor is the favor that sets you apart for the glory of God in spite of the conspiracies against you. Uncommon favor. Uncommon. That is what I present to you today. Uncommon favor. What is favor? Favor is approval. Favor is kindness. Favor is assistance, preference. But uncommon favor is extraordinary kindness. Favor is kindness. Uncommon favor is extraordinary kindness. Favor is approval. Uncommon favor is extraordinary approval. That is approval before requests. Approver, a, a favored man will get approval, but a com, uncommon favored man will get approval before he requests for them. I say that again. A favored man will get approval because God is ahead of him. Yes, but an uncommon favored man gets approval before requests. When a favored man makes requests, he gets approval. No denying him because of the favor he carries. But the uncommon favored man gets approval before he makes his request. I pray that be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. That is the favor that will pursue you and overtake you. That is the uncommon favor I present to you today. This week, I pray that that approval will come in the name of Jesus Christ. You have waited for a long time. May that approval come knocking at your door. In the name of Jesus, may the phone call come true to you. In the name of Jesus, may you not be absent to receive the favor of God. God, in the name of Jesus Christ, the call will not go into voice me. Yours will not go into voice me. You will be at done right on time to receive it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, somebody say amen and amen. A come of favor is extraordinary grace displayed on your behalf. Extraordinary grace. A come of favor is the favor that pursues you and overtakes you. It pursues you, it overtakes you. It is goodness and mercy pursuing you and overtaking you. An uncommon favored man is a blessed man. An uncommon favored man is an extraordinary man. An uncommon favored man is a man of joy, unlimited joy, unlimited possibilities, unlimited opportunities. They are valuable to him because the favor of God pursues him and overtakes him. Hallelujah. Favor again is guaranteed access to destiny helpers. Favor is access to timely helpers. Favor is access to tireless helpers. Favor is access to acceptance. Access to acceptance. 
So wherever you were rejected, acceptance is available. And I pray every rejection you have encountered in life, every rejection you have encountered in your family, every rejection you have encountered in your workplace, may favor show up and grant you acceptance in the name of Jesus. I pray every shame you have encountered may be double honor for you because of the favor of God in the name of Jesus. Beloved, listen, this is not about you, it's about the grace of God. Not just the grace, but the extraordinary grace of God lavished upon you. Favor will show up for you. A favored man cannot be ignored. You will not be ignored in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that minimized you will maximize you. In the name of Jesus, everything that limited you and that made you ordinary will make you extraordinary. In the name of Jesus Christ, and I pray and I prophesy unto you this week, whatever has resisted you will assist you because of the grace of God that comes upon you through this message you are listening to. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. What you have been denied we bet access for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Remember Queen Esther. When Queen Esther came before the king, she should not come before the king as if she is invited. But favor was ahead of her. Oh, favor was ahead of her. This was a woman favored by God. And when she came before the presence of the king, the king lifted up the scepter, declaring acceptance. Come in. The guards and all the eunuchs all that were, uh, you know, around her, they were astonished. They were surprised. How will a woman approach the king and gain acceptance when she was not invited? That's what favor does. Favor was ahead of her. God went ahead and prepared. He made the crooked places straight. He made the rough edges plain. And then she was accepted into the palace. The scepter is being raised up on your behalf now. Every crooked places will be made straight in your life. Every rough edges will be made plain. The valley shall be leveled up for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, everywhere you have been denied access, favor is ahead of you. Access is coming. In the name of Jesus, say amen and believe it. Say amen and amen. That is where you confirm it. God's word must be confirmed in your spirit. God's word must be received in your spirit. God's word must be believed. Because blessed is she that believed. There shall be a performance of those things the Lord has promised. You must believe God's word to become it. Our Bishop Benson in the house that says, uh, or blessed memory says, uh, you must believe God's word to become it. Believe it. Just believe it. Hallelujah. Favor spoke for her. Favor was ahead of Queen Esther. She was accepted. Her request before the king was granted. Do you know favor brought her before the presence of the king? Or common favor gave her access to her request before she made the request. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Some of you, some of you will be located by favor this week. In the name of Jesus, your destiny helpers, you will locate them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may you be accepted where you were rejected before. In the name of Jesus Christ, glory be to the Lamb of God. That is favor. But beloved, listen, uncommon favored man will be a man of destiny. A man, a common favored man, will give you your destiny helpers access to you. Favor will give you access to your helpers, your destiny helpers. But on common favor, we give your uh, destiny helpers access to you. They will look for you. They will locate you. Favor will give you access to your helpers. On common favor, we give access to your helpers to locate you. A common favor will make them look for you and they will find you. A common favor will position you in the place where they will find you. You will be in the right place, the right time for them to locate you in the name of Jesus Christ. Goodness and mercy is pursuing somebody listening to me right now. Goodness and mercy is pursuing you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who refused you now, they are already calculating. I decree and declare that will make that phone call to you in the name of Jesus. Your business partner will make that phone call to you. It's a time 
to enjoy the fullness of God. Amen. It is your season of uncommon favor. I declare that for you, your season of uncommon favor in your name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I say to you prophetically, whatever you are looking for, we look for you. Every good you are looking for, we now look for you. By this uncommon favor, they will look for you by the Spirit of the Most High God. They will look for you. They will locate you and you will be blessed in the name of Jesus. Enough of wandering, enough of struggling, enough of the frustrations, enough of the hard work without results, enough of the delays. Uncommon favor, we grant you uncommon results. Uncommon results. When others are looking down, you are looking up. Uncommon favor. When others cry and of lack, you are talking of surplus. Uncommon favor. The psalmist says, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. What is that for him? Uncommon favor. Thou art with me. The rod and the staff, they protect me. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of lack, in the presence of my enemies, in the presence of accusation, in the presence of the traps of the enemy. You prepare a table before me in the presence of scarcity, in the presence of COVID-19. You prepare a table before me. That's uncommon favor at work. The Lord prepares a table, prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. He anoints my head with oil. My cup runs over on common favor. One of the ingredients of a common favor is overflow. One of the dividends of a common favor is overflow. Beloved, this is the time to enjoy the overflow. Overflow. You are entitled to it. You have a covenant right to it. You will enjoy it. In the name of Jesus Christ, you must believe it. Just believe it. And walk in it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Say amen and amen. Come on. Say amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 16. The life of David. Her uncommon favor located him. In 1 Samuel 16, beginning from verse 1, the Bible said, Now the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing that I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesus the Bethlehem. For I have provided myself a king. I have provided myself a king among his sons. Go to Jesus' house. I have provided myself a king among the sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul so hears of it, he will kill me. But the Lord said, No, take a half hour with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Verse 3, Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. You shall anoint for me the one I name for you. On common favor, we name you. We name you before the anointing. He said, I will. I will show you whom you will anoint. That is the grace for on common favor. That is the access for on common favor. On Common favored men will be named before the anointing. He says, Go, I will name him. It's not men to name you, it is God to name you. And if God names you, men will favor you, men will assist you, men will show you kindness because heaven, heaven has named you and heaven standing by you. If heaven stands by any man, men are bound to stand by you, men are bound to stand with you. Yes, because the author and the finisher. Of the heavens and the earth, extending by you. He said to Samuel, he said, go, I will name him for you. And then anoint him. And then what happened? Verse 4, so Samuel did what the Lord said and went to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, do you come peaceably? And he said, peaceably I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. Verse 6. So it was when they came that he looked at Eliab, the first son, and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. The Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at the physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as men see. For man looks at the outward, but God looks at the inward. God does not see the way men see. God, look, God looks at the inward. Men look at the outward. On common favor, we look at the inward and see the commitment, your commitment to the things of the kingdom. We look at the inward and see your commitment, your focus to Christ. He said, I do not see the way men see. Absolutely. 
Now, men cannot understand uncommon favor. They say, how will you get approval before the request? That is the uncommon favor. That is the God him, that we serve. He said, I do not see the way men see. And so he went on and on. Until the seven children came. They passed through him and said, no. God said, no, I will name him for you. And Samuel was looking helpless. And he said to Jesse, what's all this? Abinadab has come. Shaman has come. None of them? Are these all your children? And Jesse said, no. There is one, but I don't think that is the one. There is one just left. He's in the bush. He's somewhere. And Jesse said, and Samuel said to him, oh, verse 11, and Samuel said to Jesse, are all the young men here? And he said, there remains yet the youngest, and there he is, keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send, send and bring him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. That's uncommon favor. We will not sit down. David was somewhere, busy, doing his work, serving God faithfully, committed to his duty, committed to his job. Uncommon favor sought him out. Uncommon favor located him in your place of assignment. Be faithful. Remain faithful. Uncommon favor will locate you. Your matter is being discussed now. They are looking for you. Hallelujah. They are looking for you. Remain committed. Don't give up. They may not have promoted you for five years, for ten years, but don't give up. Remain committed. The God that sees beyond the comprehension of man, sees what you are doing. He will send a prophet to you. And he's sending me to you now that your promotion is being signed in the name of Jesus Christ. He's sending me to you now that it shall be better than the one you have known. Life will be more meaningful for you. In the name of Jesus, scarcity will give room to surplus. In the name of Jesus, access to his presence. We give you comfort. Comfort in the family. Comfort in your business. Comfort in your life. Comfort in your education. Comfort in your, edu in your vocation. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Samuel said, we will not sit down till he comes. Why would they not sit down? Because the name of the Lord is with him. There's nothing wrong to be firstborn. Don't get, don't, don't, don't miss. Don't misinterpret the scripture. Don't misunderstand the scripture. Nothing wrong with firstborn. Nothing wrong with secondborn. Nothing wrong with thirdborn. No, nothing wrong with them at all. If you are the firstborn, you are also a candidate. You can be a candidate for the uncommon favor. But in this instance, among the sons of Jesse, there was one favored. An uncommon favor located him. His name is David. Why the sons were looking up to Jesse, David was looking up to God, and God brought him out and anointed him king before he became king. Uncommon favor, David was anointed king. And David showed up. When David showed up, he looked. Physically speaking, he shouldn't be one. He shouldn't be the one, but not spiritually speaking. Do you know God rules over the spirit and he rules over the physical? God is in charge of all. If he says uncommon favor is your portion, it is your portion. Just believe it and you'll be coming in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. David was favored. Crown king. In the midst of his brethren. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. In 2 Samuel chapter 9, beginning from verse 1, the New Living Translation. One day David asked, is anyone in Saul's family see alive? Anyone to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? One day, one day is the difference between where you have been and where you are going. One day, one day, and this is that day for you. One day the king woke up and asked. Is there yet anyone in the house of Saul that I may show kindness? Heaven was at work. Heaven was, has provoked him. Is there anyone? One day. Just what you need is one day. One day of favor with God. One day. One day of visitation will change your life. Will change your destiny. One day. The man you have been waiting to approach you will show up. The man you have been wanting to sign the contract will show up. One day. Pregnancy takes place one day. It will show up and it will happen. It will make a difference in your life. One day, the king said, is there yet anyone? Anyone. So he was not sure. But heaven was orchestrating him. Heaven was moving him. Heaven had favored just one man. Uncommon favor was to locate one man in the house of Saul. 
And so he used the king. The king. Very respectable king. King David. A man after God's own heart. Heaven prompted him. One day, is there anyone that can favor? What a question. And I pray, may those who have been assigned as your destiny helpers, as your tireless and timely helpers, may they also be looking for you now. In the name of Jesus, may your common favor push them to look for you. May they locate you in the name of Jesus. Why? May that day just set, the, may that day come forth now. In the name of Jesus, they will look for you. Hallelujah. One day, the king said, is there yet anyone that I may show kindness? Yes, there is someone. He is there. He's lying down. He's in the field. There is someone. You are the one. You are the one. They are discussing. Your board will discuss. Is there anyone we can promote? Somebody will speak for you. Speak good about you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody will speak and identify you. In the name of Jesus. Because God has gone ahead of you. Is there anyone? In your family, somebody will speak for you. Verse 2. He summoned a man named Ziba. Who had been one of Saul's servants. Are you Ziba? The king asked. Yes, I am. Ziba replied. The king then asked him, Is anyone still alive in Saul's family? I want to show him kindness. Is there anyone still alive? Ziba replied, Yes. Oh, one of Jonathan's sons is still alive, but he is a cripple. He is a cripple in both feet. Ziba responded, Yes, there is one still alive, but he is a cripple in both feet. But he's a cripple in both feet. And the king said in verse 4, where is he? Hallelujah. Did you see that uncommon favor was ahead? Favor was ahead of him? Regardless that he was a cripple, he said, where is he? And I decree and declare, this week they will look for you in the name of Jesus. Regardless of the state you are in now, your business may have been crippled. Your finances may have been crippled. But favor will locate you in the name of Jesus. He will take you out of that situation and bet a new beginning for you. I bet a new beginning for you now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The king said, where is he? Cripple or no cripple, where is he? If he's still alive, get him for me. He said he's a cripple. And not only that, he said, where is he? The king asked. He said he's in Lord Deba. Lord Deba is a place of forgetfulness. Ziba told him. At the home of Manka, son of Amir. So David sent to him and said, bring him. Bring him from Micah's house. His name was Mephibosheth. His name, Mephibosheth. He was Jonathan's son and Saul's grandson. Then when he came to David, he bowed to the ground in deep respect. And David said, greetings, Mephibosheth. Oh my God. Look at that. Favor. Let me say that again. Mephibosheth showed up. When he came to David, he bowed to the ground in deep respect. For David, but David said, Greetings, Mephibosheth. The king brought greetings for a cripple first, regardless of his status. He brought greetings to him. That was not the king, it was heaven that was a constraint that was at war. That is a common favor. Greetings, Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth replied, I am your servant. <laughs> Don't be afraid, David said. I intend to show you kindness. The extraordinary kindness and a common favor bet. I'm about to show you kindness. Because of my promise to your father, Jonathan. I will give you all the property that once belonged to your grandfather, Saul. And you will eat with me at the king's table continually. You will eat at the king's table. Wait a minute. A crippled man? Yes. So this issue is not about Mephibosheth, it's not about the king, it's about the king of kings and the lord of lords. Christ has come to give us life and life in abundance. Whatever we truncate that life in abundance for you, today we lift a standard against them in the name of Jesus Christ. This man, Mephibosheth, was crippled at the age of five and was 
gone to Lodeba in a place of forgetfulness. He was forgotten by men. He was forgotten by family. He was forgotten by the, the, the circumstance that surrounded him. He was forgotten by the society. But the God that he served, the God that his father served, the Jonathan's covenant with David worked for him. Spoke on his behalf. Spoke on his behalf. Heaven was at work. Men slept off, but heaven is not asleep. And I say to you, men may have forgotten you. Men may have forgotten you. Friends may have forgotten you. Family may have forgotten you. But God will not forget you. He said, I will not forget you. I will not abandon you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. That is God. That you may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. What can man do to me? Occasionally you will be forgotten. The place you have served so well, they may have forgotten you. But heaven will not forget you. Remain focused. That's your duty. They will not forget you. Heaven will not forget you. In this instance, he was not forgotten. One day, the king woke up and said, Is there anyone? Hallelujah. Are you looking forward to that day? This is that day. This is the day that the Lord has made. A day you and I will rejoice and be glad in. Fair people's Mephibosheth showed up and the king says, Greetings. <laughs> Hallelujah. You will sit at the king's table. The uncommon favor will grant you access to the top. Uncommon favor will grant you access to the king's table. Uncommon favor will grant you access to acceptance. Uncommon favor will grant you access to surplus, overflow in the name of Jesus. Uncommon favor will grant you access to possibilities. We grant you access to opportunities in the name of the Lord Jesus. Say amen with me. Mephibosheth bowed down, verse 8, respectfully and exclaimed, Who is your servant that you should show such kindness to a dead dog like me? Yes, that's how they have, they have neglected him. They have relegated him. They have, they have, they have, they have put on him that status of a dead dog. He said, Who am I, a dead dog? Then the king summoned so servant Ziba and said, I have given your master grandson everything that belonged to Saul and family. Everything that belongs to you will return to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Those owing you will pay up in the name of Jesus Christ. It shall be in your favor. That case will be in your favor in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Say amen and amen. You and your sons and servants are to farm. He said to Ziba, you and your sons and your family, you will farm that land for my God. For Mephibosheth, a crippled man. Yes, on common favor at work. The Bible says, and Mephibosheth had 15 sons and 20 servants. They became the servants of Mephibosheth. Ziba replied, verse 11, Yes, my lord, the king, I am your servant. I will do all that you have commanded. And from that time on, Mephibosheth ate regularly at the uh, devil's table, like one of the king's own sons. Mephibosheth had a young son named Micah. From then on, all the members of Ziba's household were Mephibosheth's servants. 13. And Mephibosheth, who was crippled in both feet, lived in Jerusalem and ate at the king's table continually. I pray, may death, that. That situation that have rejected you, may that situation promote you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the palace be open for you. May you dine with the king at the royal palace in the name of Jesus Christ. At the royal table in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Everywhere you have been forgotten, I declare remembrance. In the name of Jesus, you will be remembered. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Say amen and amen. You will be remembered. You will not be forgotten anymore. In the name of Jesus, uncommon favor. It is a favor that pursues you and overtakes you, overtakes you. That favor will pursue you and it will overtake you. That's the favor that locates you. That's the favor that grants your request before you make requests. Mephibosheth sat with the king from Ledeba, the place of forgetfulness. Kripo sat with the king because one day God prompted, one day God visited the king and commanded him by the spirit to look for that young man called Mephibosheth. 
They will look for you in the name of Jesus Christ. I say they will look for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. They will look for you. Just the way the, the angel came to Mary in Luke one twenty eight, the text we read, it said, Thou art highly favored. Hail. Thou art highly favored. Highly favored means uncommon favor. The woman was just on her own, doing her own thing. It says, Thou art highly favored. I pray that that salutation will come to you. I pray that you will receive the angel that will say to you, You are highly favored. They will use men. Men will knock at your door to say, You are highly favored. Amen and amen. There needs to be a difference in your life. Enough of struggling. You have struggled for too long. There needs to be a difference. You need to be promoted. You need, your status needs to change. You need to move to a higher level. And God can do it. One day. It's just the difference. Thou are highly favored. He said, now, highly favored. What is the meaning of that salutation? Yes, you are highly favored. And I say to you, you are highly favored. You are Highly favored. Amen and amen. Favor will locate you again. Favor will locate your business. Favor will locate your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. How do you assess this favor? How do you assess it? Number one, focus on Christ. For without him you can do nothing. Let your focus remain on Christ. Focus on Christ. Christ has come to give us life and life in abundance. John 10.10. 10. Let your focus remain. Regardless of the society. Regardless of the things you hear that are contrary to your expectation. Remain focused on Christ. No man having put his hand into the plow and looking back his feet for the kingdom of God. That's what the word of God says in Luke 9.62. Remain focused on Christ. Number two. Engage the Holy Spirit. Zechariah 4, 6 says, not by power, not by mind, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Romans 8, 11 says, if the Spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you, that same Spirit shall quicken you to favor. Quicken you to uncommon favor. Do you know, beloved, in Luke 1, 35, and the angel answered, when Mary said, how can this thing be? The angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. It is the Holy Spirit that bears on common favor. It is the Holy Spirit that secures on common favor. It is the Holy Spirit that energizes men to be favored. Only the Holy Spirit. He said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and overshadow you. Ragadaboria, I pray for you today. May the Holy Spirit come upon you and overshadow you. May the Holy Spirit come upon your family and overshadow them. In the name of Jesus, I declare that the Spirit of the Almighty God will come upon you and overshadow you. Overshadow your business. Overshadow your family. Overshadow your marriage. Overshadow your life. In the name of Jesus, I pray that the Holy Spirit will overshadow you and bet a new beginning for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray Pray that the Spirit of God will come upon you, come upon your home, overshadow your home, overshadow your marriage, overshadow that relationship, overshadow that business, overshadow that career. You as a student, may the Holy Spirit overshadow you in the name of Jesus. I decree that the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. What you were looking for, may they begin to look for you. May one day come in your life where you will be visited by the favor of God. Unlimited possibilities in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, the angel said to her, the spirit of God will overshadow you. What you need in life is the overshadowing of the spirit of the Lord. Yes, you have struggled with health. A decree shall be well with your health. In the name of Jesus, you have struggled financially. A decree shall be well with your finances. In the name of Jesus, you have struggled with relationship. It shall be well with your relationship. In the name of Jesus Christ, you have remained unmarried. And now you are getting old. You are getting worried. No, one day. One day is coming, hallelujah, this is that day. And as you listen to God's word now, God is signaling to somebody who is coming to you. This week, they will visit you. This month, they will visit you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, someone is knocking at your door. He will knock. I pray that you will be available to open that door in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, the king woke up and said, is there yet anyone? Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. So focus on Christ. And number two, engage the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will never disappoint you. The Holy Spirit will make that day come to pass. 
The Holy Spirit will ensure that that day, that one day will come to pass in your life. You will not die before your time. No, you will not be truncated by COVID-19 in the name of Jesus Christ. You will live to testify of the goodness of God in the name of Jesus. The joy of the Lord is your strength and it remains your strength. Hallelujah. If you have not given your life to Christ, you need to give your life to Christ. Hallelujah. As many as received him to then give you power to become the sons of God. Say with me. Lord Jesus, I've heard your word. I believe your word. I accept you into my heart. Forgive my sins. Forgive my bad behaviors of the past. Give me a new beginning. From today, I will serve you all the days of my life. Thank you for accepting me in Jesus' name. If you have prayed that prayer, you are born again. Call us. Write us. We'll talk to you further about the love of Christ. Finally, Hebrews 10.35. The Bible says, Cast not away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience, after you have done the will of God, that you may obtain the promise. Yes, it is who are he that will come, we come. But the just shall live by faith. If any man draw back, my soul shall not have pleasure in him that draw back. But we are not of them that draw back. We are of them that believe that one day will come. One day will come, and it will better not come of favor for us in the name of the Lord Jesus. Remember, greater is he that is in you than he that is against you. The Lord bless you, the Lord honor you, and favor you. Amen.